Good morning. Hey, it's good to be with you this morning. Like everybody just say hi on there this morning, or if you got a uh, praise report or a prayer concern, to please post those this morning. Let's just encourage one another as we're uh, gathered here together uh, virtually on Facebook. And I trust that you've had a good Christmas, but I want you to know Christmas is not over. All right. We've had a wonderful family celebration on Christmas Day, the first day of Christmas. Yesterday, we had another wonderful celebration with other family on the second day of Christmas. And if you're counting, today is the third day of Christmas. On the third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. What is it? Three French hens? All right, so there are 12 days of Christmas, and it's not just a song. And so we are continuing to rejoice in Christmas today and for the next nine days, and to know that there are 12 days of Christmas. And so uh, this morning as we gather, uh, we still have the Advent wreath, but Advent's over. All right, so it is Christmas, Advent's over, and so we're not going to light the Advent candles because we're not waiting anymore those five, four Sundays of waiting for Christmas to get here. But then you might say, well, if we're not lighting the candles of peace, hope, joy, and love, is that good or not? Well, the truth of the matter is, is that the center candle, the Christ candle, is the candle that supplies all of this. And so that's why we can continue celebrating Christmas. And so we're going to light the Christ candle here this morning. And to know that uh, in Christ, he is the one that supplies the peace, hope, joy, and love. If you're looking for some of that today, look no further than Jesus. I had a discussion uh, here within the last week or so uh, with a good friend, and uh, one of the questions that just kind of came up to me was to ask them, uh, what is the core, the very core of uh, your faith? What is your faith in? And uh, so the person came back with a, with a pretty good size uh, paragraph of what uh, the answer to that question was. And I said, okay, now, can you boil it down any further? If you had to say what was the essence, the very core of your faith, you know, what you're banking on, what you're relying on, what you're putting your whole life on. And uh, the person responded with a very good answer. The all-sufficiency, the exact uh, sufficiency of Jesus Christ. And so we know that we can find peace, hope, joy, and love in Jesus. You don't have to look anyplace else. Paul said, it is Christ and him crucified. So we rely fully upon him. He, he, he changes things in our lives when we rely upon him instead of ourselves or anyone else. And so this day on the third day in, of Christmas, we are relying wholly on the all-sufficiency of Jesus Christ. All right, so... Um, we're going to, uh, have some prayer here this morning, but before we do that, I we have an opening song and I was just thinking about, we're going to be talking about the angels and that the angel, and then a whole host of angels showed up to, uh, to, uh, me, uh, greet the shepherds and to share with them the announcement of Jesus's birth. And when I was going through the hymnal and uh, seeing, man, there's there's a lot of rejoicing. And there's a lot of the angels rejoicing. Angels from the realms of glory uh, would be one. 
uh, good Christian friends rejoice just going through here and seeing uh, some of the different uh, hymns sing we now of Christmas while shepherds watch their flocks uh, the angels showed up angels we have heard on high hark the angel hark the herald angels sing uh, you can go on and on the first Noel the announcement of the birth uh, joy to the world amen and so God brought a lot of joy he brought a lot of praising uh, there's a song in the air he brought the angels to make the announcement, to make it clear to the shepherds. And we're going to be looking at the role of the shepherds today. So we're going to start this morning with the song, Angels We Have Heard on High, Glory to God in the Highest. takes a second. At 1 800 Contacts, we're here for people and with guess now we're with sharing that. Hope she can easily renew her prescription online. Time for a sigh of relief. Technical difficulties. Order now and save 20% on your first purchase. And don't forget to use your flex spending account.
All right. Well, I hope you're continuing to rejoice that the joy continues on and on. Joy is not, uh, can, it's not dependent upon our circumstances. And it's not dependent upon it's Christmas day. I've heard uh, people say before, oh, I wish every day could be Christmas. Well, it's true. Every day is Christmas that God keeps on giving. He keeps giving us his son. Uh, maybe you woke up this morning here in Ohio. It's uh, nice and sunshiny today, and it, the snow just looks so beautiful. The, the crystals on the snow, the, the sparkling, and to know that God continues to be with us each and every day. As we are centered on him, we can see his glory. We can sing with the angels and so glory to him. So we want to have a time of prayer. And so I don't know if there's any prayer concerns that have come on this morning. Uh, but also uh, trust that you're rejoicing and giving a good praise out there. You, do you know anything good about Jesus? Well, put it on there so we can encourage one another. Or just saying hello and uh, praise the Lord, however you want to say it, that God is alive. Uh, you know, we have the saying that uh, God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. So we want to go to prayer this morning. I do know one prayer request. Uh, Virgil uh, gave me an update. Uh, Ada has uh, been uh, transitioned, I believe it was on uh, Wednesday, uh, to a uh, care facility that she'll be doing uh, rehab. So we want to continue to lift up Ada to God and uh, other prayer concerns that you have. So uh, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just thank you for another day that you give us on this third day of Christmas. We thank you, Lord, that you are alive, that we serve the living God, that as we have a living, breathing, uh, growing, uh, more uh, seeing relationship with you, Lord God, that you are continuing to evolve things in our lives. And Father, we just thank you for your love that there is no, no end to. Uh, we can't reach the, the ends of the depth of your love. Your love was displayed to us at Christmas. Jesus declared his love by stretching out his arms and dying on the cross. You show us how much you love us by giving all of yourself to us, to be to humble yourself, and to become a human being, to come even as a little baby and not born in a palace, but born in a stable and laid in a manger. So Father God, we just thank you that you care for each and every one of us. We just thank you for this service here this morning that we're able to do, uh, being able to reach out to one another and Lord, uh, that you are present with us during this time. We thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit, Lord, that uh, you are present with us. You are God, Emmanuel, God with us, and that you are there to encourage us through all things. And Lord, no matter what we might be going through, we know that we are not going it alone, that you are right there beside us. You are the friend that sticks closer than a brother. And you promise us in your word, when we draw near unto you, you draw near unto us. Father, we just pray that you would give Ada your peace as she has to be away from home right now, as she's in the... Uh, rehab center, Lord. We pray that they're giving her good help. We pray for healing for her leg and her hip, and Lord, uh, for the break that is there. Father, we just pray for your, for your uh, comfort to her and your assurance, Lord, that you are with her, even in the midst of her time that she hasn't been able to be at home even during this uh, Christmas season. So, Father, and others that uh, we might know of, we just lift them up in our hearts right now. And, Lord, maybe even speak those out, ones that we know, of, ones that maybe have lost loved ones here recently, Lord. And for uh, others, I know my brother's here with me this morning and uh, his wife, 
they lost their, uh, Martha lost her dad on, on Christmas morning. And uh, so we pray for Martha and we pray for uh, the family and others who have lost loved ones during this time. Father, uh, we just know that you are there with us in the midst of all circumstances, that you rejoice with those who rejoice and you mourn with those who mourn. So, Lord, we thank you that you are the great God in heaven that is so very near to us. And we just thank you for this opportunity to focus upon you and to worship you together as a congregation, even while we are separated by physical distance. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So on uh, Christmas Eve, if you got to see that service, Normally, uh, I read uh, the Christmas story, which is all 20 verses, the first 20 verses of Luke chapter 2, but I only read the first uh, seven verses on uh, Thursday evening, and so we're going to pick it up with what happens after that, which usually we hear this on uh, Christmas Eve, but um, as it finished up with Jesus being born and... Uh, that uh, Mary wrapped him snugly and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the guest room. And so in verse 8 through verse 20, let us hear these words. Nearby, shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angel stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them. And they were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you. Wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angel praising God. They said, glory to God in heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. When they saw this, they reported what they had been told about this child. Everyone who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds told them. Mary committed these things to memory and considered them carefully. The shepherds returned home, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Everything happened just as they had been told. Oh, we thank the Lord for the reading of his word and that that word is supplied to us. And really, uh, to think about these words that are read, that this happened after the birth. It, it probably happened later that night, and uh, but it was after the birth. So we celebrated the birth on Christmas Day, and then... What happens next? The angel coming to the shepherds. But there's some things that I would like to lift up here this morning about um, the shepherds and what was the role of the shepherds. And if there's a role for the shepherds, maybe there's a role for us as well. So it, you know, it starts out here and says shepherds were living in the fields. Anybody living in a field? I know that I've camped out before, having my brother here thinking about our Boy Scout days, and uh, we would camp 
maybe for a whole week at Boy Scout camp, but, uh, you know, kind of like roughing it, right? Well, they were living there. So that was their home. They were living there for, who knows, a very long time or maybe most of their lives. So we know these, uh, these shepherds were rugged. They were blue collar workers. Um, you know, just to think about a, uh, uh, an angel showing up at night and the glory of God showing up, you know, probably they weren't easily excited but when you have something like this happening, uh, it definitely got their attention. It, it startled their hearts. They're, they might have uh, not been startled in other ways. I know last night I was out in the garage uh, putting some trash out there, and uh, they, they were inside playing cards, and they heard a yell from the garage, and there was a bird that had got in when we had the garage door open. And, but the garage door was closed now, but I startled the bird, and it's flying around in the garage and it was easily star startling me and I was terrified <laughs> kind of like those shepherds and uh, I tried to get that bird out but my wife my lovely wife she had to come to the rescue and somehow she got the bird out when I couldn't so rest assured there's no birds in the uh the parsonage garage but uh yeah, I'm, I'm sometimes easily startled, and uh, but these blue collar workers, you know, they were guarding the sheep, and so there might have been am animals at different times, and they knew how to, to meet the uh, challenge or the emergency at hand, but this angel was definitely uh, terrifying them, right? And uh, so there's some things that the angel says, and I, I love the precision about what God does. You know, God lays it out very succinctly. First, he says there's a baby born in, uh, in Bethlehem, in David's city. So that's specific, right? It's in, in Bethlehem, which they weren't too far from Bethlehem. They were out in the country. Um, and then it also says that that baby was wrapped snugly. You know, uh, the, the uh, King James Version is uh, swaddling claws but snugly. And so uh, there's two points here about the baby. The baby's wrapped snugly, but the baby is also uh, laid in a manger. So we might think if you just heard about the uh, baby being laid in the manger, being laid in the, the feeding trough of the animals, you might say, well, maybe you're being a little bit careless. But we know that Mary and Joseph, God had already touched their hearts, prepared their hearts, and they were, they were caring very preciously for God as God became a baby. And so they wrapped the baby snugly to keep the baby warm out there in the cold, out there in the stable. But they also laid the baby in the manger. So, you know, uh, normally, even in during those times, there probably wasn't too ma many babies that were first born in Bethlehem, then uh, snugly wrapped. The, maybe most baby, babies might have been snugly wrapped, but this baby was snugly wrapped and uh, laid in a manger. So very specific things that the angel said. And then there's the confirmation that all the rest of the heavenly hosts uh, come and are either saying or singing glory to God in the highest heaven. Uh, just like we uh, had in the first song, uh, Gloria in excelsis Deo, glory to God in the highest. And so um, with all of that, and then all of a sudden the lights go back out, right? And so, uh, you know, what's the response of the shepherds? Uh, did you see something? Did you see something? Did you hear something? You know, uh, no, that wasn't their response. The response was they looked at each other and they said, well, maybe we should go to Bethlehem and check this out and see if this is really true what has happened. Because they had these specific words from the angel and God speaks to our hearts in specific ways. And so another thing that uh, the... Uh, angel said, which I didn't mention at first, was, I bring good news to you. God wants to bring good news to the shepherds specifically, but he wants to bring good news to us. 
And then the angel doesn't stop there, but he says, wonderful, joyous news for all people, right? Sometimes we think, oh, well, you know, the shepherds had this wonderful experience, right? But God says through the angel that I want to bring glorious, wonderful, joyous, great news to all people. God is ready to bring it to each one of us. Um, and uh, so I wanted to lift that up as well. And uh, so then they go to Bethlehem. Let's confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. So they went there. And what did they find? When they went into Bethlehem, they found the baby lying in the manger and uh, swaddled up or uh, bound up snugly as he's lying there in the manger and that Mary and Joseph were taking care of him. So what's the response of this, right? The response is that they, when they saw this, they reported what they had been told about this child. And so what's the role of the shepherds? The role of the shepherds is first to hear the message, to uh, embrace it, and to go and go out and to uh, walk in the way that God has revealed. And then once they have this confirmation in them, then they're ready to share it with others. They're ready to be a witness. When you call a witness to the stand, you call the witness because they've been able to experience something and they're there to testify, right? And so the shepherds are now testifying. Their role is to be a witness. Their role is to testify. And so what is it for us? How are we supposed to? It says it's for all people. This wonderful, joyous news is for all people. That God wants us to open our hearts in such a way that we would be able to experience him. And that we would then be able to bank on it. That we would be able to say, this is what I am going to allow to be led my life in so that I am going to walk in it, just like the shepherds began to walk in it. They said, let's go to Bethlehem. And so once we've opened our hearts to God, God comes in. Paul says, what? I don't walk by sight. I walk by faith. And so we step out in faith. The shepherds had to step out in faith. They could have explained it away and said, no, that was just a, a, a bright light. Or, you know, maybe it was just a mumbling of uh, some animal in the weeds, whatever it was. But no, they stepped out in faith and they actually went and showed up. You know, when they showed up there and they found these people in the stable, uh, they might have said, uh, well, uh, we're here because, uh, well, we saw this angel. And Mary and Joseph might have responded to him like, what planet did you come off of, right? <laughs> no, but they stepped out in faith and God was there to confirm it and they found it exactly how God had said through the angel. And so they were then called, their role was to be a witness. They were the first evangels. They were the, the uh, ones declaring what God had done. And they were there to spread the message. They were there. To, I was thinking about this. They were there to verify the event, right? There's now witnesses for the event. But even more importantly than that, they were then called to go out and to share. I know that I was uh, having a discussion one time while I was uh, working at um, the place to uh, help troubled teens in West Virginia. And um, I was talking with this one young man. He's 17 years old. Uh, he's one of the older ones, uh, but he had gotten his girlfriend pregnant uh, before he uh, got taken into custody for this program. 
And so it was very heavy on his heart because his uh, child was being born and, and uh, he's going through a lot of really angst and angry things as well as troubling and just a lot of emotions. And, and I was talking to him and I said, uh, you know, I shared with him that, you know, God is there. God is there to help you. God is right there if you would open the door and that he's, he, he shows us things as we trust in him. And so I was witnessing to this young man and uh, I'll, 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 I'll remember his response. He said to me, he said, well, you know, that, that's good for you, Brian. That's good that you've experienced that, but you know, I'm, I'm different. I, I, you know, I've got different circumstances. So I'm, I'm great. I'm wonderful. I'm glad for your, for your experience, but I'm just in a different spot. But that's not what the angel said, right? The angel said, this is good news for you. And it's wonderful, joyous news for all people. One of the things I said to him was, you know, God's your creator. So it doesn't change. It doesn't change for me. It doesn't change for you. It doesn't change for every person. And we are called to be a witness. Now, he didn't really respond that day, but I knew that I was, I, I, I had a peace and actually a joy in my heart because I was sharing what God was telling me to share. But, you know, it hasn't always been that way for me. You know, sometimes, you know, being a witness, you know, sometimes if we just called into a court of law, we're saying, eh, I don't know if I want to get involved in this. I don't know if I want to be a witness, right? And uh, so, uh, or, you know, if God does a work in our lives, if we know that he's done something, because, you know, when we experience God, then we can actually witness about it. If you never had an experience with God, if you never came to a place of trusting him, then how can you testify about something that you don't have any witness about, right? But if you do witness it, then God calls us to share it. God called the shepherds after they went and they saw, wow, yes, we did find a baby, perhaps snugly, in Bethlehem, lying in a manger, we're going to go out and share this. And some people might not accept it. Well, what's the, what's the things about uh, being a witness for God, right? Sometimes people might look at you like you're an alien, right? And Jesus said, he said a couple different things about being a witness. Uh, one is that you're going to be persecuted. Uh, he said, I'm being persecuted for being obedient to God and sharing God's truth and God's love, even though we share God's love with people. He said, you'll still be persecuted. They still chose that they wanted to kill Jesus. He said, don't worry about it. You're going to be persecuted. I'm being persecuted. Even the prophets from the Old Testament, many of them died for sharing God's word. Even though they might have shared it in love, they were still persecuted. They were even killed for their faith. And so it's hard sometimes to open our mouths. Another thing Jesus said, which is hard words, but he said, if you're ashamed before me, if you're ashamed before me, which I've experienced that in my life, there's times when I didn't open my mouth. It gets easier as you practice it, just like other things that we practice. But when you start sharing God's truth, sharing God's love, sharing who God is or what God's done in your life as you're being a witness, that uh, it's hard to do it. But Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father in heaven. You know, when we go to heaven, there ain't nothing we're going to be able to stand for to say, hey, look, God, I'm going to mess up a little bit, but yeah, I got it all pretty much good. So you ready to let me in? No, none of us can be good enough. There's only one. There's only one that will be able to let us in. And I certainly don't want him to be ashamed of me because of the limited time I had here on this earth. 
that I kept my mouth shut, that I was, I was ashamed or I was afraid to open my mouth. The shepherds were not afraid. They were willing. The angel said, don't be afraid, but they were willing to go and to see and to walk in the, this direction from the Lord. And they were willing to testify about their faith. And they were the first evangels. They were the ones that went, even returning to their home. Sometimes the hardest place to witness is right in our home, right to our families, right to those that we know best and they know us best, right? But the shepherds returned home, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, because everything happened just as they had been told. When God tells you something, I've been following Jesus for, I lose track sometimes, 33 and a half years, all right? And uh, there's not one time, I don't know how many days that is, I don't know how many hours or seconds that is, but it's a long time. There's not been one time where God has failed. It's me, I've failed, but God has always been faithful. He is the one that is there to go with us, and he will help us be a witness for him, and he wants us to be a witness for him. Jesus isn't here now. He calls us to be his hands and his feet and his mouth to others, to love with the heart of love that he gives us. When you do it in love, then leave it in God's hands. People might reject it. They might strike out in anger towards you, but if we're being obedient to him, we know that we're being a witness, and and some will actually accept the message. And what a rejoicing. Those are the times when I treasure most in my life when someone says, okay, I'm willing to do this. I'm willing to lay down my desires and say, I want to go with God's desires. So that's our prayer today. And, uh, and we want to pray right now. Father God, I just uh, thank you for this uh, message this morning. I thank you for those shepherds, Lord, and their world was top, turned upside down. And it was probably never the same again because they received the message. They went and they followed it and they witnessed it and they shared it. And Lord, you do the same today, just as you did then. Lord, for each and every one of us, this joy, this, this uh, wonderful news has come to each one of us. And Lord, as we receive it, the dear Christ enters in. So Lord, I just pray, Lord, that uh, we would confess when we fall short or when we've been ashamed or maybe we haven't stepped out in faith and we haven't witnessed for you. Lord, Fill your heart, fill our hearts with your love so that we can then step out in faith and share a witness, share a, the God that is living and alive today because he lives in our hearts and he is there to witness to others as well, maybe through our witness. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so our closing song is uh, very appropriate for this. The shepherds, while they were out in the fields watching their flocks at night, and they went and told it on the mountain. So let us go and tell it on the mountain. You need help. Sorry. Let God help you through this.
Amen. So, hey, open your heart to God, be filled by God, and go 